Hello guys and welcome to another uh, tutorial, short video related to ArcSight Enterprise Security Manager. This time um, we're going to talk about, we're going to see the ArcSight DSM rules. First, let's uh, say a few words about joined rules. Now, uh, joined rules have this capability, this capacity of uh, recognizing patterns among uh, events uh, that you are receiving, that you're getting from uh, various, uh, you know, different network nodes uh, that you have uh, deployed across your network. So uh, essentially the joined rules, they're triggered by events that can match two or more sets of conditions at the same time. So by evaluating those different uh, sets of conditions that you have specified, you can uh, correlate, you can evaluate the events and then you can trigger some actions as a result. In this practical example that I'm going to do now, uh, we're going to take some events from a successful uh, Windows login. Uh, so we're going to observe, we're going to gather uh, some events like those. Uh, with our ArcSight DSM and then we're going to, like I said, correlate them with some other events, for example, from a um, successful uh, access control card, uh, you know, those batch card readers, those um, batch sweeps that we all do in order to gain entry to a building or to an office. Uh, what we might want to do is to see whether a particular uh, user, a particular you know, uh, person has gained access to a particular room like the server room or the QA lab room or just the lobby and then has successfully as well attempted to log on into his um, you know, uh, machine. All right, now... Um... Yeah, let's go here uh, <clears throat> under the ArcSight DSM console and first let's take a look at the events of interest. We're going to be looking for some badging success events like this one. Okay, this one is coming from the lobby. Um, this one as well. Yeah, and this one as well. Another one. Yeah. This one is coming from another location. It's coming from the QA lab, uh, you know, room. So we want to target some events coming from this location right here. So whenever, you know, an individual gains access, gains entry to the QA lab room, uh, we want to know this. And not only, but as well when he logs in um, into the Windows OS. Um, you see, here I have some successful logon events generated by the Microsoft uh, Windows, uh, you know, by the uh, operating system, and those are logins by the administrator, by Zara, by this guy, Super, for example, uh, M, Hedberg, and so on. So we have a bunch of uh, users here. Okay, let's go on the rules and let's start building our rule. Let's give it a name. I'm going to call this one Join Rule Correlating Physical Access and Windows Logins. So the next step, we go under Conditions. All right, and under conditions, um, we want to modify the alias, the alias under which we're going to place, we're going to put our conditions based on which events from the batch reader, uh, you know, are going to be evaluated. Okay. Um, so one by one, now I'm going to start adding uh, different conditions here. And what are eventually going to be the conditions? Well, the device vendor, 
the device product. We can use the um, device custom string as well, which was containing this information uh, from where exactly this event is coming from. Is it coming from the lobby? Is it coming from the QA lab? or from the data center, from the server room, or from another location, right? Um, and thinking about the event, uh, probably as well, uh, we might want to add uh, as well the device event class ID field contains some, again, custom uh, information which again is related to the batch reader which shows whether if uh, it's uh, batch in or batch out the event and as well whether if it's successful batch in or batch out type of uh, an event Right. Okay. Yeah. So something like that. And now we're going to start adding the second set of, uh, you know, conditions, like the successful login uh, conditions, which are going to describe the login event generated by the Microsoft Windows operating system. Um, yeah, one by one, again, here under the successful login, we can start adding the category behavior, for example, can say that uh, the category behavior is going to be authentication verify then um, again as well the outcome um, we can say that uh, we're going to be looking for a successful event the device vendor we can say Microsoft mm. and yeah on top of that uh, for example those three users uh, that we have uh, Zara, Super, and this guy M. Uh, Hedberg. For example, those are new hires or operators, junior operator team members. Uh, and um, yeah, we have given those guys uh, access to the QA lab room, and uh, we know that uh, they're supposed to be there. So um, we can add them as part of the condition of the rule. So nothing strange, essentially, if they do uh, login and uh, if they gain essentially access or entry into into this room, right? So it's absolutely normal if Zara or if Super, you know, gains access there. One match, so one batch sweep and one successful login. And we can say that uh, as well, uh, we want, for example, those events to occur um, in a time window. The time window expiration should be something like five minutes. All right, then um, we're going to define as well actions. So what actions the rule is going to execute automatically whenever the conditions, whenever the aggregation criteria were matched. For example, we can say that the uh, join rule is going to create a correlation event, uh, you know, specifying some more information, uh, describing furthermore, you know, this um, particular situation that has occurred. So. Uh, like I usually say, 
during my trainings is that you're free to define um, and yeah you are the one who builds basically those conditions so the more information you put here the easier the life of your analysts and operators eventually is going to be when especially they need to investigate a particular scenario a particular situation okay uh, so yeah you like an author you as an author or content creator guy who is in charge for building rules building filters and stuff like this um, you want to make sure that you have specified a lot of uh, fields here describing the scenario describing the particular incident that might be occurring okay the conditions aggregation one event within five minutes and we're going to test as well our rule so how do we test our rules we're testing them using the so-called uh, correlation um, rules channels that are running against a set of historical events and they can evaluate the event stream showing to the author or showing to the content creator that you know um, there were some events uh, that have happened in the past matched and matching the rule conditions the rule attributes that you have specified Mm. Okay. So when testing when testing the rule Mm, just make sure that you're catching enough uh, events, enough possible matches. In this way, you know, the rule is going to trigger, is going to fire successfully. All right, so the active channel will start loading and will show some correlation events and yeah you can double click you can explore you can as well right click the correlation event you can say detail chained and then uh, what else yeah you can display the base event the two base events and the correlation event which is the result out of those two base events happening then if you wish to display as well the uh, other different fields like the device uh, event class id which says in success and as well the device custom string and the target uh, username you can uh, just modify a little bit more the field set and you'll see that all this information is contained in the base events so thanks a lot for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video